it, you know, when they were fighting it. I think a lot of them died in there. The Battle of Antietam, also known as the Battle of Sharpsburg to the Confederates, occurred September 17th, 1862, proving itself as the bloodiest single day in American history. Within 12 hours, out of a combined force of 132,000, an estimated 23,000 casualties were suffered. Consequently, the battle put an end to Robert E. Lee's invasion of the North, thus leading Lincoln to issue the Emancipation Proclamation. One such landmark was the Dunker Church, the church you see now, a site which saw both Union attacks against the Confederate forces and a truce between them to exchange the dead at battle's end. It was at this site that Charles Carlton Coffin, a war correspondent, remarks. I recall a Union soldier lying near the Dunker Church with his face turned upward and his pocket Bible open upon his breast. I lifted the volume and read the words, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Upon the fly leaf were the words, We hope and pray that you may be permitted by kind providence, after the war is over, to return. Such a storm of balls, I never conceived it possible for men to live through. Shot and shell, shrieking and crashing, canister and bullets whistling and hissing, most fiends locked through the air until you could almost see them. In that mile's ride, I never expected to come back alive. Lieutenant Colonel Sandy Pendleton, Confederate States Army. During the battle, the cornfield became the site of its most violent clashes, resulting in within only hours nearly 8,000 casualties. For this reason, it's called the Bloody Cornfield. As the battle raged on, Major General Joseph Hooker is stated to have said, In the time that I am writing, every stalk of corn in the northern and greater part of the field was cut as closely as could have been done with a knife, and the slain land rose precisely as they had stood in their ranks a few moments before. It was never my fortune to witness a more bloody, dismal battlefield. Among wounded soldiers, Clara Barton served to be a refuge, with one eyewitness saying, She had told as few men could have done, staunching wounds which might otherwise have proved fatal, administering cordials to the fainting soldier, cheering those destined to undergo amputation, moistening lips, parched with thirst, and closing the eyes of the dead. At one moment during the fighting, she recalls, A man lying upon the ground asked for drink. I stooped to give it, and having raised him with my right hand, was holding the cup to his lips with my left when I felt a sudden twitch of the loose sleeve of my dress. The poor fellow sprang from my hands and fell back, quivering in the agonies of death. A ball had passed between my body and the right arm which supported him cutting through the sleeve and passing through his chest from shoulder to shoulder. There was no more to be done for him, and I left him to his rest. I've never mended that hole in my sleeve. I wonder if a soldier ever does mend a bullet hole in his coat.
The Sunken Road, the site which caused over 5,000 casualties. Because of how it filled with blood and bodies, it got the name Bloody Lane. As the sun sank to rest on the 17th of September, the last sounds of battle along the Antietam Creek died away. The cannon would at last grow cool, and unwounded men and horses could enjoy rest and food, but there were already thousands sleeping the sleep that knows no waking, and many times as many thousands were suffering all the agonies that attend on wounds. The corn, the trees, so fresh and green in the morning were reddened with blood and torn by bullet and shell, and the very earth was furrowed by the incessant impact of lead and iron. Francis Winthrop Palfrey, 1863-1865